morning we are here at tractor supply in Pedalton, indiana this is my first time here so let's go ahead and go and see what this one looks like in comparison to the others i've already uh opened my doors got my doors open already so let's go and check in most of the most of the time at these tractor supply ones they typically will have you drop the empty first, then you'll bobtail to the Turn receiving right. office. Oh God, I think we're, <laughs> I'm done with you. Um, we'll go through there, so let's see. We gotta take this a little bit wide here. truck over there to clear and then we'll go and more than likely this looks like a pretty decent size distribution center so more than likely they're going to have us drop the empty first and then we'll probably be bobtail to the uh, receiving office to go and pick up our our load most of most of the tractor supply dcs work the same we all typically tend to work uh, where there won't be anybody in the receiving window. They usually just have like a wall of paperwork for you to just kind of go and find your load and then sign it out. It keep. I like that method. It keeps things rolling. It keeps people from having to stand in a line and wait for you know 20 to 30 minutes to get to get your paperwork. So keeps. I think it keeps a good ebb and flow. And then they come and check you out here on at the security gate. It's typically how all the other ones work. But I haven't been to this one before. This is a new one. So I know that I've recorded a couple of times at some of the other ones, so I figure, well, this is a first time experience for me here, so maybe I go ahead and record and let y'all see what this one looks like. It's an interesting looking pond over here. I wonder if that's man-made or if that's just naturally how maybe water like puddled up <laughs> and created a little pond there. I don't know. I don't know if it's natural made or, or man-made. It looks kind of interesting. But yeah, guys, so we're going to wait here. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and pause it for just a minute here. And then I'll come back whenever we get checked into security and we're ready to back this MTO. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So I got the instructions on what we're doing. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking for spot 411. That's where they want me to drop this MTO. Said that 411 is on the other side against the building. So, as I can see, this is our 200s, these are 100s on this side. So, we're going to drop this in 411 and then we're going to pick up in 558. Looks like they're transferring a. Ooh, that, whoever that, whoever that's for, that thing is loaded. <laughs> I 
sometimes these yard dogs don't give a s who you are they're just, they're just like they they don't they don't like that you're here so I, like, i think he said over here we're gonna take this turn over here to the left and i believe the 400s are over here on this side they are and he said 411 so it looks like there's four or five there so we're gonna start turning it in here bring it in here we're gonna look and see if 411 is indeed empty it is not and from time to time guys i'll tell you this with these tractor supply things not always are these are these spots open sometimes they are sometimes they aren't sometimes they're actually used up it just goes with the territory people uh, yard dogs will drop wherever they want to drop and they won't communicate to the to the guard shack that the spots are actually not empty so we're gonna keep kind of trotting along here until we find our own spot and we're just gonna make our own spot and just go with the flow. That's what you gotta do sometimes out here. So it looks like we got 421, that's empty. So this is where we're gonna go ahead and drop this. So I typically, what I like to do is I like to look at the spot. I like to make sure there's not any kind of objects, any obstacles. Uh, I like to see how much room I have to work with. This is a general size uh, opening, so should be pretty easy i'm gonna look over here it's a little bit that since this looks like this is a uh, high traffic area because you got trucks coming from one side got trucks coming from the other side you always want to kind of take a look i like to take a look and just see how much room i have to work with we got trailers on the other side um but that shouldn't stop us from being able from being able to get a good enough angle where we're not going to have to really uh, 90 hard 90 this thing is going to be kind of more like a maybe like a 75 degree angle won't be able to do a 45 degree angle because we don't have enough space but we won't have to do a hard 90 and put and since there's no trucks on the other side it's just trailers we'll have enough room to kind of to angle it and we won't have to worry about the the, the swing out so that's kind of what i think i'm going to do here um what I'm gonna do also what I'm also gonna do is on the paperwork I'm gonna make sure once we get this dropped right here that I marked that I dropped it in 421 because 411 was full and then 500 apparently is on the other side against the fence line over there we'll pick up our loaded so let's go ahead and get started with this back so I'm gonna pull my windows down it's probably gonna get a little loud here for a minute so bear with me while we do this I'm gonna try to talk through this and hopefully the audio picks up. If not, if it's just too noisy. I won't worry about it. But I'm gonna take it about right here. Get right here and I'm gonna start making my turn. There's nobody coming to the right of me, so I'm good to go here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it about right here before I gotta start turning it back the other way to get the angle on the trailer. I got a lot of room to work with over here, so I'm going to utilize all of this room right here as much as I can. Take a look back, see where I need to go. I see that it's between that US Nissan and that blue and that blue trailer right there. This should be good enough. I'm going to put on my, my hazards. Since it's a high traffic area, I'm going to honk my horn. I don't think we're gonna 
rub. Let's turn it in this way. We'll go all the way left. We should be able to get this thing straight in there, no problem. We may need to torque it a little bit more to the right to get it to move. About right there is where we want it. All the way left. trucks connected to trailers on the other side because you don't have to worry about the the swing of the swing around when you come in back about hitting the other trucks on the other side so it's pretty open you just get the right angle and then you just kind of work it in take your time don't rush it too much this was pretty good I didn't even really have to adjust too much got it in there pretty good and uh, we'll go and we'll drop it now so let's go ahead and go do that and then we'll go pick up our loaded and get the heck out of here Okay, guys. I wanted to show you something real quick. This is a little bit of a little bit of a bonus, but this is the, this is an art that gets a little bit lost when it comes to unhooking your uh, your tractor from your trailers. And it's a little bit of a lost a little bit of a lost technique that a lot of people forget and don't do, and it'll really save you from damaging your fifth wheel. So I'm going to show you that right now. So I've already unhooked all the cables. I put the uh, Put the landing gear down and pull the, pull the fifth, fifth wheel pin. So now what I can do here, I'm just going to disengage the parking brake, put it into drive. I'm going to let the truck roll out just a little bit. I'm looking at the mirrors, right? I'm seeing about, I'm seeing the first ax, uh, the first axles on the drives, on the drives come out of the trailer. Once it's there, I know that it's sitting on the fifth wheel the trailer sitting on the fifth wheel there so what I do instead of just rolling and falling off of it I'm going to lower my suspension airbags you're going to feel that you're going to see the, the suspension load go to zero below zero that means your that means there's no weight in the trailer anymore sitting on the fifth wheel if you're doing this and you see that there is still weight on the fifth wheel that probably means that the landing gear ain't working. So now I can just roll under it. Boom. Nice and clean. No hard disconnect. Trailer stick sitting on the landing gear just fine. Pump those, pump that suspension back up, and then we're good to roll. That guys is a lot easier to do than just I mean, it's easy just to dis just to disconnect everything and then just roll out of it. But nine times out of ten, you're gonna hear a big old like clanking sound or from the, from the trailer dropping off of the fifth wheel. And sometimes, if it hits the right way, you can break the fifth wheel and then 
you're screwed for however long it's going to take to fix that fifth wheel. That also helps to let you know that the landing gear on the trailer is actually working. That's also good to know. So now let's go, let's go to 558. the trailer number on here on this paperwork but we're looking at 558 which he said should be along the fence line over here and I don't see any CFI ones over here so it's probably further down it could be a CFI trailer it could be a Transport America trailer but we're sitting we're supposed to be looking at 558 this is 508 so it's about 50 spots down that way so let's go ahead and go look for it over there I'm also going to show y'all what a good way to connect is so that you don't just jack around with your with your fifth wheel. These fifth wheels, although they're pretty durable, if you don't treat them correctly, you can break you can break the uh, you can break the clamps, you can break the entire fifth wheel off of the plate if you're not careful just bang into things and just roll off of things eventually you're gonna you're gonna break that fifth wheel and then you're like I said however long it takes to replace it all right so it should be coming up to our trailer here in a couple of spots it might actually be right next to this RTI guy we'll see it's gonna be pretty close to him all right so we got 57 58 should be right there creep up right next to them. Ooh, it looks like it's right in between. Yep, and it's a Transport America one. I know that because it's blue. All the blue ones are Transport America ones. So, let's see if there's any trailer numbers on here. Yeah, see, it's a 514. If it starts with a 514, 143, it's a Transport America trailer. It still has the old number on it. Oh, it actually was right here. No, it's actually, that's mine. Excuse me. So, yeah, let's go look and see. this point I can go ahead and I'm already pretty much at a good angle this is gonna be kind of a tight one because if you're looking here I don't got a lot of pull-up room here so this is gonna be kind of interesting it's gonna be kind of interesting to get this one out because I'm gonna have to take it all the way to the ramp um, hopefully maybe I can see how this RTI guy does it uh, it may actually be more beneficial well no if the RTI if the RTI guys there it won't be beneficial for me to take it to the right I got trailers on both sides, but this trailer's popping out a little bit, which means that I'm gonna have to like pull it out more before I can even turn it. So I may, if this RTI guy leaves here, I may have to go to the right and then turn it around to leave here because I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to clear this thing if I pull it over to the left. I may not have enough space over here. But either way, let's get hooked up to this thing. So let's go ahead and turn here. We'll have enough space to get under it.
Okay, so it's good. It's on the plate. The fifth wheel is on the. It's on the trailer, so it's good. It's lined up. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna slowly ease into it. You're gonna hear a little clicking noise when I get back there. I'm gonna try not to bang into it because that's what damages these fifth wheels. Oh, I may not have gotten there. Let's see. Actually, I think we're on there. Looks like it's a little off. Let's go check. Let's back up a little bit more. to everything that one was interesting i was a little bit off center on the pin so the pin kind of hit the side of the fifth wheel and uh it wasn't gonna go on there so i went ahead and just pulled it out lined it lined it up sent dead center got it in a second time but as you can see what you want to do is when you know you were about to get connected to the pin you don't have to smash the truck into the pin into the pin you just gotta slightly tap on the gas or the pedal a little bit and let it kind of roll onto there and you're gonna hear that that uh, that clicking and once you hear that click or you feel that click you can stop and then do your tug test so let's see what this guy does I want to see if he goes all the way left or what he decides to do uh, he cleared it I mean, he should be able to clear me I want to keep an eye on him because I, I gotta let him 
He's got to be able to see. He should be good if he keeps it all. The, if he turns it a little bit to the right, I think he'll be good. He can clear me. He'll be fine. Yeah. So now that he's gone, I got two options. Although I'm kind of seeing that I got should have enough room to take it out and then go around this pole here. We're gonna try it out and see. If I don't feel like I, if I don't feel confident in that. I can always go left. I can always pull it out to the left and then go back there and find a place to kind of just whip it around real quick. But I think I should be able to have enough room. I wish this trailer next to me was more back, but I should have enough room to clear it and kind of just go over there around the pole. I take the front end of the truck around the pole this way. And if I go out and then come out, I think I'll be able to clear this trailer without hitting it. So I'll have to double check on that, but I'm gonna go and connect to this thing real quick. All right, guys, so I found a problem with this trailer. It's loaded at about 33,000, 34,000 pounds. And the tandems are where, where they should be. Right here, when you got it, when you got a loaded trailer about 34,000 pounds, this is probably good where the, where the tandems are here. All of this is good. Everything checks out. Brakes are good, tires are good. There is one problem. It's the mud flap. So, as you can see, this mud flap is touching the ground. Granted, granted, this this is a little bit elevated, but I'm going to show you the difference. I think it's touching the ground. And, that's what, and then you got the other side; it's level. On the other side, it ain't touching the ground. That's exactly how it should be. The reason for that is because the bar is bent. The bar that holds the mud flaps is extremely bent. Like, look at how bent this is. It just bends and curves down. So something, one of the previous drivers or something did something with this at some point and bent the hell out of this thing. And the mud flap is now grinding. You can tell that it's already been kind of grinding on the ground just a little bit already on this side, on the side that it's not touching, that's, that's touching the ground. It's kind of shaving it off. And what it's already done too is because it's probably been ripping on the ground up and down, up and down, it's actually ripped it off of the two bolts here. So even if i took these two bolts off and put and lifted it back up it's already ripped so it ain't gonna stay like it's just gonna come right back off so it's being held on by two bolts and uh the only other thing i can do is take this off and put another mud flap on i don't have any extra mud flaps on me but well, eventually what's gonna happen is this thing's just gonna keep dragging on the ground and it's going to rip and it's going to tear off and then there's not going to be a mud flap here and then, and then your DOT, that's a DOT violation when you don't have uh, mud flaps. In fact, this may already be a DOT violation with it dragging on the, on the ground like this. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to snap a picture of this from afar. I want to call uh, our safety department to let them know that this is going on with the mud flap and whether or not they want me to go ahead and drive with this thing like it is or if they want me to go ahead and call a 24-7 uh, to come out here and see if they can fix this. I can tell you right now though, the only way to really truly fix this is not to replace the mud flap because if, you're only, because if you replace the mud flap, this thing's still gonna be dragging on the ground. You have to find a way to fix this bar and pull it up. Only other way I know that you can is that you need to have something strong enough, like a, like a, a strong enough uh, wrench and then it would have to be like a machine one. It couldn't be a hand one. You'd have to have something that you'd be able to machine to get enough force to torque the bar up and bend it. But with as strong as these damn things are, more than likely you'd have to get a weld that are coming here and tell, you'd have to either take it, take this off completely and just replace the bar, or you'd have to take off the bar and you'd have to weld it to get it back up to get it more level it should be sitting about right here where my arm is like that in order for the mud flap to to be like the one on that side this is this is not good this is this is bad so i like i don't know why somebody didn't catch this before before they even dropped this trailer or before they started loading it but this is a problem and this this could easily be if i got stopped this could easily be a a violation for me so that's why i'm going to call my safety department right now and we're going to try to see if we can get this straightened out so that at the very least my safety department knows that if i get pulled over and they give me a ticket for this that's not on me because i let them know about it and they told me to roll so <laughs> we'll see what they say 
okay guys so this has been a fun one <laughs> so I called um, our I called my uh, my fleet manager and they said that uh, I needed to call roadside because yeah that's a problem so I called them and now that we're gonna get a tech to figure out what we're gonna do but they do want me to get this problem fixed before taking this load to Maryville Michigan which is about 300 and some odd miles away from where I'm at here in Pendleton, Indiana. So unfortunately that kind of puts things back a little while because either either I'm going to be sitting here at this tractor supply until somebody comes and fix this problem or they're going to have me drive to the nearest Loves, which I believe is about five miles away from here. So I don't think that this mud flap is going to tear up and rip off in five miles. I think I'll be fine. But honestly, that's not my call. That's going to be a roadside's uh, call. So I'm waiting for a call. As soon as they call me back, then I'll find out whether or not they're going to do the repair here in the lot, or if I'm, or if they're going to have me go ahead and drive it those five miles to that low uh, truck here. So we'll see what happens. But hey, them's the brakes. It happens. Um, this is why before you take off, you do pre-trips on every single trailer you hook up to because you never know when you're going to find something that's a problem. And in this case, I found one. So there you go. Better to find it now and get it taken care of than to have a problem happen. That mud flap, that mud flap rips off and gets under the tire and who knows what happens from there. So, Or you get pulled over and they give you a ticket because that mud flap is dragging on the ground. So better to get that taken care of before anything happens so yeah it's a good thing i do my it's a good thing i do pre-trips on every single trailer i pick up <laughs> we'll see how it goes here in a minute all right guys we have an update so love's care came out to the trailer and they bent it they bent it back up straight they put a new mud flap on there so i'm good to go i'm getting ready to roll it took about probably about two hours for them to get here and do the and do the repair so two hours later <laughs> two hours later we're finally ready to leave this uh this dc so we're gonna go ahead and do that and so i'll go ahead and get driving and then we'll come back when we get to the tractor supply and see how we're gonna set up for the uh for the dock over there all right guys so we are about minutes away from getting to the tractor supply I've already looked to see what the entryway for the dock looks like it's on the back of a strip mall Only three miles ahead take exit 266 to I-94 business west Ratchet Boulevard so we're gonna pull in there then I'm gonna get off the truck take exit 266 to I-94 business west Ratchet Boulevard if one, they can unload me tonight. If they can't, can I stay? Point three miles ahead. Turn right on I-94 Business West Gratiot Boulevard. Can I stay near the dock? So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Take me a while to make this turn. I'm gonna let that car go and then I'm gonna let this truck come by me and then I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Okay, should be clear now. strip mall here so we want to go through the back of the strip mall and not through 
the front because the dock's in the back anyways. This tractor supply, I've never been to this one. This is gonna be a little bit different than some of the other ones that I've been to, although I have been to a couple that have been a part of a strip mall. So it wouldn't be the first time, but it's been a while since I've been to one that's been a part of a strip mall. But this one looks like it has an entryway for the dock that you can go in through the back of the strip mall and you don't have to go through the front with all the uh, general public and whatnot and have to fight through, you know, weaving through general public traffic and whatnot to get to the back of the shopping mall. So, yeah, it looks like we've got a yellow, which means we have to wait right of way cars wave to the mr sheriff man looks like we should be able to make this cut right here so chevy's going to go as well so this kia we're going to take a two wide we can go up this far we're going to hit this white car. here because I can see the dock right there there's the dock yeah, there's the dock right there that we need to go to so let me just break this for a minute I'll turn my hazards on I can see the dock right there it's literally right right here right in between right, right where that fire hydrant's at that's the dock we need to go to so the easiest way that I'm going to be able to get into this dock, and hopefully that trailblazer isn't a problem, I don't think it is, but I'm going to have to widen out the turn here, right? And I'm going to go, I'm going to go all the way to the left so that I can widen the turn, so that that way I can come in across about where that silver car is right there, so that that way I can then move just all the way back to the dock. So it shouldn't be too hard to dock this thing. The key is, is I need to find out if I can even park there tonight, because if not, if I can't park there tonight, if they don't allow parking back here, uh, then uh, I'll have to take it to the to the loves that I saw about seven miles back. But I'm going to go ahead and get off right here. I'm going to just get off for a minute. I'm going to go talk to the guys uh, here at the tractor supply and just make sure that it's okay. If they can't unload me tonight, then hopefully they can at least uh, let me park here overnight and then we'll get unloaded at about five in the morning. But I'm gonna go talk to them right now. We'll see what they say. Hey guys, so we got the approval to go ahead and park by the dock for the night. They're not gonna be able to unload me until the morning. So, but we did get approval to at least park at the dock and that's where we'll stay tonight. Typically what we can do, we're able to do with these tractor supply loads. So let's go ahead and take a peek over here on the left, make sure no one's coming down the street, no one's coming. And then we'll make sure nobody comes that way, nobody coming up the, up the back way. So let's go ahead and do it this way. Turn the right blinker on. And we should be able to clear this trailblazer that's sitting right here. No problem. Don't want to hit these mailboxes. Yeah, so do this right here. And this is, like I said, this is going to be the interesting part here because what I'm going to need to do in order to really get this thing close to the dock is I'm going to have to do this, right? This is going to be the easiest thing to do. So we're going to dip it here a little bit. We're going to dip it in. Then we're going to dip it out. And we may or may not be able to clear this pole here. If we don't, it's okay. 
not a big deal if I don't clear this pole, which doesn't like we are. It's okay. We'll go ahead and keep it here. Keep it about right here. Because we'll be able to do this. If we've got enough room, let's turn our blinkers on. We're going to go in reverse. Just a little bit. I can see we're not poking out on the road. And we're going to go all the way to, we're going to go all the way to the left. Because we're going to bring this thing this way. Just a little bit. We want to keep an eye and make sure we're not going to go into the into the middle of the road, which we're not. A little bit more. Cool. We can stop there. And we can come a little bit over to the right. And we're going to go all the way right. Which now we should be able to clear this pole here. The steering wheel gets kind of gets kind of gets kind of angry at you when you do that. All right, so now that we cleared this, we can go ahead and move it left a bit so that that way we don't jackknife. Oh, man, that sun is bright. Okay, so now, what we can do now, we can move it forward. And we're going to just kind of move this thing. I can barely see because of the sun. Yeah, so I don't even know if y'all can see what I'm seeing because the sun's like literally right there. But now I got it kind of at, a, at the angle that I want, more or less. I'm going to take it all the way over here. I'm going to take it all the way to these trash cans because I can utilize the space, right? All the way to these trash cans. Okay, now here, here we can park it for a minute and just kind of assess there. If you look right there, that's the dock. So all I really need to do is the tail end of the trailer needs to go a little bit this way to get to the dock. So I'm going to move the trailer a little bit over to the left. So I'm going to do that by moving the steering wheel over to the right in reverse, just watching where the trailer goes. So before I do that, I'm going to lock that. And it's usually good common practice to just kind of look around and make sure that there's nobody walking around, that there's no cars coming, especially when there's other businesses here. And if you want to let people know, just in case there is, you can go a little honk. That lets people know, hey, it makes them aware. So there ain't nobody coming. Let's pop it in reverse. And let's turn this thing. You don't have to turn it too far right, just a little bit. We're going to be watching these things over here just to make sure as we're going this way that we don't that we don't bump into anything over here. So I want to make sure that you're clear with them here. We're watching the trailer back there. We're good. That's about the angle that you want. So it'll take it a little bit. Probably took it a little too far. But now I kind of got the angle that I want, so I can pull it forward now, get it about where I want it, about right there. That's probably perfect. Keep it straight now and just go all the way back. The funny thing with these, uh, with these docks that kind of sucks about them is that you will lose as you're going towards them, and as you get really, really close to them, you're going to lose sight of them. Like you're not going to be able to see both sides of the dock. So you're going to have to just kind of know, feel, get a good feel that you're going towards the dock. If you need to, what we can do right now is I can stop, right? I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to go ahead and stop it real quick. And then I'm going to look out. I'm going to see just how the trailer is lining up. It looks like it's lining up pretty good with the dock, so I'm going to keep going straight. I'm not even going to turn the wheel that much. I'm just going to go straight. Nobody behind me, no cars coming, no nothing, so we're going to go just straight. I really don't think that I need to turn the wheel anymore. I think if I just keep it straight, it'll be good. Just a little, little tiny you know, wheel play, but nothing too big to kind of change the angle. I think the angle is pretty good. As I get closer to the dock, I'm going to slow down because I don't want to bang into it. So I'm going to get a little bit closer here, a little bit closer, and then right here is about where I'm going to start kind of slowing it down, because I do want to bump it because I want to see how it's going to look, but I don't really want to hit it too hard, because those dots, they will move if you, if you like bang into them, <laughs> they will move. All right, so let's go and take it, let's, let's go ahead, I, just, I do want to hit it a little bit, I'm going to move the trailer just a little bit that way, that's good. And we're just going to kind of bump up on it just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. You don't want to hit it too. There we go. So we bumped it. So now 
go ahead and turn off these. And we're going to go and look and see what it looks like. It looks like it was pretty good, but we're going to confirm that here just to make sure. This was not a hard one. This is actually kind of an easier one than uh, what I'm typically used to at some of these tractor supplies. Now, look at that. If that's if, Let's see how it looks on the other side. It looks pretty good on this side. Uh, that, honestly, guys, is about as perfect as you can get on the angle because all that matters is that once I open the doors up, they need to be able to take the forklift right up here and roll right into right into the the uh, the truck. And this is way more than enough room for them to go in. If I wanted to, if I absolutely wanted to, right? If I wanted to get this more, more over here to the left, I would just have to pull up a little bit and then just get it to move back. But honestly, guys, I think. This is going to be way more than enough. Once, once the doors are open, this thing will slide right over. They won't have any problems uh, getting rolling their forklift over with, when the doors are open on this thing. So I think we'll be good to go with it sitting right here. I think it's, I think it's perfectly fine. So, so we're parked now. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. It's actually, pretty, it's actually better just to leave it there like that because you won't have anybody. Uh, you won't have anybody bumping into you or anything like that or trying to get into your doors at night, even though they're locked. So I think it's good there. But yeah, we're all parked, guys. We're good to go. So I got about a good maybe nine and a half hours before they unload. So I'm going to go ahead and get some rest. But yeah, that's good. We'll get unloaded in the morning.